Hi, I'm Lexi and I'm officially the youngest person to travel to every country in the world. Breaking a Guinness World Record is a lot more complicated than you would think. To be able to prove that I had been to all of these different places, I needed to submit passport stamps, visas, plane tickets, train tickets, taxi receipts, accommodation receipts, every single piece of paperwork you could ever imagine, as well as getting two signed witness statements from people I met within each and every country. That's almost 400 witness statements. It actually took me six whole months to finish my 7,000 page evidence documentation for breaking this record. 22-year-old Lexi comes from a small mountainous town in Northern California and she's essentially been traveling since she was born. So I started traveling when I was really young with my family who owns a travel agency in our small town and my parents would travel a lot for work and thankfully they would never leave me at home when they went on their adventures abroad and I actually ended up going to around 70 or so countries by the time I turned 18. Contrary to what it may seem, Lexi did get an early college degree and first heard about the youngest person to visit every country when she was on a gap year. Two months into my gap year, I realized that I wanted to make something more out of my travels and I was wondering who was the youngest person to travel to every country and that's when I looked up the Guinness World Record and I found that the current record holder was 24 and a half and I was 18 at the time. So I have to ask this question. I get a lot of comments that are like, oh, but if you were a girl traveler, you wouldn't be able to do this. And I'm always like, no, I have many <laughs> friends that are girls that travel that go to Yemen by themselves. What is your take on solo female travel? Yeah, I am a very strong advocate for female solo travel because it's been something that changed my life so much and empowered me so much as a woman. And one of the things that I wanted to learn when I was traveling to every country was is it possible for a young woman to do this? And thankfully I found out that there was more kindness in the world than anything else and I was welcomed in every country without having any serious problems that were anything that wouldn't have happened anywhere else right. in the world. Do you think it's significantly more challenging to do it as a female than a male? I wouldn't say that it's significantly more challenging. If anything, I feel that, especially when I was filming and everything, a lot of people feel less intimidated by the presence of a foreign woman than they are by a foreign man. So I think that there are a lot of different advantages and disadvantages, but I had actually two rules for every country that I went to traveling as a woman. One of them is that I do not get intoxicated while I'm traveling by myself. So no drinking, no doing drugs or partying, anything like that. And I also don't go out at night by myself. Typically, travelers get in the worst kinds of situations when they're you know, drunk by themselves at night. So, And those, thankfully, are really avoidable situations. I've always said that travel is the best education that one can get. And for Lexi, it's just incredible how much perspective she's gained at such a young age. I think that traveling when I was so young made me mature more quickly uh, because I had so many different perspectives on the world from what, what life is like in rural Thailand to what it's like in Dubai. So it made me really grateful for uh, everything that I had at home. It's been super cool to meet Lexi in person after being online friends for so long. She's one of the most awesome, fearless, and courageous travelers out there. And we surely will never run out of things to talk about. Lexi, where do you see yourself in five years? Now that I've finished traveling to every country, don't want to put another really big like, goal in front of myself. I know that I want to continue to travel and I want to start capturing and sharing these stories to inspire other people to travel as well and hopefully helping to give other people the tools so that they can experience more of our world for themselves. Lexi, what is one message you want to say to the world? One of my biggest pieces of advice for people who want to travel is that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to.
this is like the outtake after we're just hanging out in the park and i'm gonna have chris every like minute you're just gonna say a country okay okay so say a country <laughs> uh yemen Yemen. Okay. I was there like seven months ago. I did like eight days there and that's by far the most dangerous country in the world. Yeah, I can definitely agree. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your picture with like, you have like a huge gun. <laughs> yeah. The R, like RVGs or something. Um, yeah. M Yemen is one of the most intense places I've, I've been You went sure. to Aden, right? Yeah, I went to Aden. I was there. It was one of the first like really off the beaten path places that I went. And I went with a complete stranger, uh, Gunnar Garfors, who's also traveled to every country. I was there as a photographer for him. And really? Yeah, I was there for- What year? Uh, in 2018, I was there. And it was an unusually stable time, thankfully, mm -hmm. but getting off of the plane and having the fixer like hand me a hijab and an abaya, and I had never worn any of those, before and like putting that on in the car and then seeing all of the rubble and the streets and I'm everyone surprised walking you could around fly. the That's guns and everything yeah it was wild the <laughs> airport wasn't even open when i was there like no airports were open <laughs> so i had to go crazy. through the omani border and my tour guide wasn't even there to the only like a f he, he sent his friend to the border to meet me and it was like a nightmare i woke up in the middle of the night and ev there were like 50 men blocking the entrance of our hotel really? and we were the only people staying there only yeah, foreigners same. like in the country and they were like looked like they were kind of like fighting and pushing each other around and like firing guns everywhere it was really like, so terrifying it was like two o'clock in the morning oh my gosh. and i asked the i called my fixer of course he didn't answer the phone i like woke up gunner he like jumped out of bed it was like what's going on um and it turned out that it was a wedding party <laughs> Wedding. Yeah, that sometimes was like they the do kind of fire. Yeah. feeling ever. Wow. Brazil. Brazil. Uh, I went to Rio four years ago for the Olympics, and then I spent three weeks in Florinopolis, south of that. Mm. And then I went to Belém in the north for like two days. What about you? Okay, nice. I, Belém was actually the last place that I, nice. I traveled to. Originally, I went to Iguazu uh, Falls, which was incredible. And I just spent two weeks there for Carnival in Salvador, and then went to Belém and went to the Amazon and how much acai did you eat so much it's like I crave that more than anything else and you can get it here but it's like no it's like I've been making it at home yeah like is, every is day it yeah it's my favorite lunch awesome Sri but Lanka Sri Lanka you go first Sri Lanka I didn't have the best experience in because I usually try to go kind of off the beaten path and I found a national park that looked really interesting mm -hmm. instead of doing like the trains across the right, country right. and so I took a risk on that and then I ended up just having like running into issue after issue and kind of wasting a lot of time which I hate when I'm traveling. Was that the elephant national uh, park? Y yes. Were there elephants there? There were like, there were supposed to be. Yeah, you didn't see any? <laughs> I didn't see any wildlife when I was there which was such a bummer. I like Sri Lanka. I spent a lot of time in Kandy in the center and then in Gal Beach in the south and Colombo. I've been there twice. Russia. Russia. I only went to Moscow, which is why when people say, what are you going to do after you travel? I'm like, well, Russia is so big that it has 10 time zones from the western point to the eastern point. So I was like, I need to go see more places. But I spent a week in Moscow and I really liked it. I thought it was it's one of the coolest European cities, I think. Where did you I go? I kind of had the same story there. I only went to St. Petersburg. Mm. So I don't feel like I've, I've gotten to experience all of it. And I really, one of the things I, I want to do this coming, tra whenever we can right. travel again mm -hmm. next year or something. Siberian? Uh, I want to do the Trans-Siberian. That's yeah. like high on, high on my list. Oh, uh, we should do it together. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we just, you get on a train for like two weeks maybe and you can stop where you want. Yeah, exactly. Siberia so just fun. sounds so surreal in my mind. Yeah, like, that's who, like one of the places you hear about when you're a kid it's like who's living there <laughs> what are they eating <laughs> we should find out let's do it kenya kenya um <clears throat> it's one of the friendliest countries in the world i've been there like four or five times nairobi i've been M mombasa and kasumu which is in the western side but i really like nairobi it's like a really modern um fun capital city where did you go in kenya <laughs> The last time I was in Kenya, I was only transiting there and I ended up spending three days there because the airports 
went on strike and it was also oh when that Ethiopian Airlines flight crashed really? on its way to Kenya. So last time I was there was not that very, horrible. it was horrible, it was a nightmare. Um, Those but, are back to back bad stories between Sri Lanka and Kenya. Yeah, <laughs> but my original trip to Kenya when I was, that was one of the places I went to when I was young with my family and we went for the Great Migration. Nice. So it was one of the most surreal things to be like a young yeah. kid and seeing all of those Gosh, animals so in cool. South Africa. South Africa. Um, Kruger National Park is amazing. Mm -hmm. Did you go there? Yeah. Um, and then I went to Johannesburg. I didn't love it. I've been there twice. It's just like there's pockets of cool places in mm -hmm. Joburg and pockets of not cool places. More of like a kind of like a business or industrial right. area. It didn't have as much liveliness as Cape Town right. does. I was a beautiful, like the garden route. Never went there. Oh, you missed out. I, I went uh, cage diving with the Great White you Sharks You did that there? there? Oh God, yeah, it was I'm jealous. really crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, Liechtenstein. <laughs> Liechtenstein, one of the smallest countries in Europe. <laughs> one uh, of the hardest to pronounce as well. Yeah, one of the hardest to pronounce. I remember I was, I was couch surfing there back in my couch surfing days and I stayed with a guy named Simon and he was like, yeah, you can stay at my parents' house. It was like a palace. It was like four floors and he's like, yeah, they're out of town, but we can just do whatever you want. He, we got on his motorcycle and we drove to like Austria and we drove to Switzerland <laughs> within five minutes. He's like, yeah, I just ride my bike over the over The, over the, the country is only like 15 miles yeah. wide or something. I, that was one of the first countries I ever went to by myself. Did you go to Vaduz? That's like yeah, the capital. I, I stayed in a hostel in Vaduz and I got a little bicycle and yeah. I biked the entire country. Yeah, you can walk the country too. <laughs> it was so cool. It's that was so green. So beautiful and like all of the different castles right. kind of perched mm -hmm. throughout it and there's just right. a whole like cathedral mm -hmm. of yep. mountains. It looks like it. Switzerland. It basically is Switzerland. Like it's right next door. So <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. That's a wrap. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's this been was so great fun. to meet you for the first time. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.